Hello family, I'm here today at Mengo, Kawakas, Paris, one of the oldest parishes in Africa. And I'm here with a tour guide He's going to help us introduce yourself. <clears throat> yeah. My name is Elvis, a guide at the King's Palace, Lubiri, Mengo. The place where we are, it is the capital for Buganda Kingdom. Buganda Kingdom, one of the most oldest kingdoms we have here in Africa, which has existed over 900 years back. The place where we are, it is the main palace for the king. Our king, Ronald Muenda Mutevi, there is a title which you call him, you call him Saba Saja, meaning that he is a man above all men. He has more other palaces where he resides, though this is the main palace, but he does not sleep here. This palace uh, was constructed in the year of 1922 by uh, King David Chua, the second king to sleep on this hill. Majorly in our kingdom, each king has a role of uh, getting a strategic place where he can build his palace. Kings in Buganda normally chose hilltops due to the security purposes and strategic importance. So in the year of 1885, King Daniel Mwanga, the 31st king of Uganda, came and identified this hill. He established his ancient palace here. He found here people of the Hippopotamus clan. It is imperative to tell you that Uganda kingdom is organized on clan basis. The kingdom has 56 clans. Clans are categorized into animals, they can be plants, they can be insects, it can be water, and again, it can be, uh, it can be plants, it can be animals, it can be insects, it can be water. So each clan has, uh, has a clan leader or a chief who heads it, and some of those clans are represented here on the road, which we call the Royal Mile. So King Mwanga came on this hill, he found here people of the Hippopotamus clan. In the kingdom of Buganda, each clan has a role to play in the king's palace. Yeah. Uh, the people of the Hippopotamus clan are herbalists. Their role is to provide medicines to the local people in the kingdom. So when King Mwanga identified this hill, he built his ancient palace here, but unfortunately, his palace caught fire. King Mwanga ran off from the hill and went and started residing with his prime minister, who was called Mukasa, known as the Katikiro of Uganda by that time. He went into intensive research to find out what caused fire to attack his palace. That's when King Mwanga discovered that the people of the Hippopotamus clan were not happy with what he did of taking up their hill. King Mwanga came and ordered the people of the Hippopotamus clan to come and pick all their belongings from the hill and take them elsewhere. Among the things which were on this hill were the grinding stones. A grinding stone in Luganda, when it is singular, it is called Olubengo, when it is one. When there are many, they are called Mengo, where this hill derives its name from. The people of the Hippopotamus clan took the grinding stones, but the hill remained with the name of the grinding stones. King Mwanga uh, lived up to, 19, uh, up to 1897 when he was exiled in the Seychelles Island. He came into power during the colonial times. He came into power during the colonial times. And this king is remembered to have fought so many battles with the British government, but he was not successful. He was exiled to the Seychelles Island, where he died in 1903. His remains were returned back to Buganda in 1910 and buried in the Kasubi tombs, the UNESCO heritage place where our kings are buried. King Mwanga was succeeded by his son. His son was known as David Chua or Daudi Chua. David Chua came on the throne when he was only one year old. He was born in 1896 
and succeeded his father in 1897. King David Chua was even reagent since he was very young to help him in the governing of the kingdom. King David Chua, he was the first Buganda king to travel many, many outside countries. He was so much exposed. King David Chua, so many changes abroad. When he returned back to the kingdom, he embarked on the construction of the modern palace, this structure. 1922 it was it constructed and finished in 1933 he copped it in britain this man furthermore when he moved outside countries anciently in africa girls were not permitted to go to school education was mostly for the boys when he traveled abroad he admired girls who could go to school and many countries pro pro could produce powerful ladies. When he returned to the kingdom, he embarked on girl-child education. Our king always has names. Uh, our king is represented by many symbols. And one of the symbols is the lion. The lion is the king, is known to be the king of the jungle. The most, uh, one of the most bravest animals in the wild. Normally our king, we call him a lion. In Luganda, it's called Mpologoma, meaning that he's strong. Outside here, the palace, we have the Royal Mile. The Royal Mile connects the palace to the parliament. Across, it's the parliament for the kingdom. Yes. It is exactly one mile from the parliament of the kingdom to the palace. Yes. Uh, this, pal uh, the, this Royal Mile was uh, built by King Frederick Mutesa when he visited King George's palace yes. in Scotland, Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Yeah. When he visited there, he came back in 1955. He constructed the parliament across. Across? The yeah. side is the parliament? Yeah. Okay, okay. That building is opposite his palace, this okay. side. And it's, it's in a straight line? If... Yeah, it's in a straight line. Yes. It's exactly one mile at the entrance of the palace yes. up to the entrance of the parliament. It's a straight line? Yeah, in a straight line. Okay. Uh, on this road, we yes. have two roundabouts. Yes. We have this small one here, which yes. has blocks yes. in the middle of it. Yes. We have another one in the middle of the road. It's like a splitted drum. Yes. A tower. A tower. Only the king is the only person permitted to walk in the middle of it. So I'm not allowed to remove? Nobody. It's right. Yeah. Okay. It is symbolic that when the king is speaking or making any decision, yes. he is always straightforward. Okay. On that same road, we have monuments of clans and moldings describing the different totems okay. which we have in Uganda. All right. This side, we have Idi Amin's cannon. Yes. This was a gun which was used by Idi Amin when he came into power in 1971. Idi Amin was a great friend to Colonel Muammar Gaddafi of Libya. When Idi Amin heard rumors that his former boss, Obote, is coming back to fight him, he solicited some support from Colonel Muammar Gaddafi of Libya. Such military weapons. There were quite many of them here, but when the kingdoms were restored by His Excellency Museveni in 1993, other guns were shifted, but this was agreed upon to remain back act as a tourist attraction and to give us a memory of what happened here that this palace was once a military barracks the machine itself is from the soviet russia then the tires they indicated that they come from west germany it's where gaddafi got it and sent it to his great friend idi amin when he came soliciting for support of military tools yeah this side across we have some of the remains of the vehicles of King Frederick Mutesa. When this palace was attacked, uh, Idi Amin and Obote they had envy and jealous on Mutesa. They made sure that they destroy much of his property. Some of his vehicles were burnt, others were even smashed and buried in the ground. We have here uh, in the late 50s Mutesa was recognized to be one of uh, the richest men actually in Africa. He used to drive some good vehicles, but many of them were destroyed. They brought graders, others were smashed. These were just returned and brought back here. 
on top this black one is a Benz Daimler it Benz. Is, yeah, Daimler Benz. It is sitting down on another vehicle, a frame of a Cadillac. Cadillac, one of the most expensive cars in the world. Yeah. Down the Cadillac. These were smashed and buried in the ground. They were just retained. At the back, we have another vehicle, a Rolls Royce limousine. Oh, Rolls Royce. This was smashed. And also destroyed. So there are three cars. Yeah, there are three the... cars here. Okay. Yeah, he received a Rolls Royce from the Queen of England as a token of appreciation. Then he bought motor Rolls Royces during that period. Very soon they're going to open up a Bogana Museum where uh, more other uh, uh, assets will be exhibited. Yes. So uh, the current families which you are seeing around, yes. these are the families of the soldiers. They stay here. from UPDF called the Kabaka Protection Unit, KPU. KPU, uh, so Kabaka are, Protective Unit. Yeah, so their families are the ones which reside here. Oh, okay. They give security to the palace okay. and the, to the king. Okay, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. This is the Rolls Royce, Mercedes-Benz and the Cadillac. Yeah. Okay.